first things first, let's go ahead and gut this Al Gore abomination. I'll use as much as possible from the rear swing arm, but uh, I think I'll probably have to modify a lot. What I think I'll do is keep the bottom chassis in place while I add a top tube so that everything stays true and straight. The top tube will be a 1 inch diameter thick tube, I think a little bit less than 0.1 inch, I forget. Next I do a redneck version of notching the tube. And I think that should be good enough. After that, I use my CNC plasma cutter. Gosh, I freaking love that thing. Sorry, to cut out some parts, mostly some brackets and some body panels. These will actually end up being my motor mounts. This last bracket came out uh, a little bit on the spectrum, so I'm gonna go ahead and modify it a little bit. Nothing a little bit of hammering can't fix. What I'm welding here is the bottom motor bracket, which will also hold the um, suspension, and it should fit nicely just like that. To strengthen the frame, I am actually going to double up on the top tube using the same uh, tubing as before. Well, as you can see, there's a little bit of a gap here and I don't want to redo this. So at risk of making myself look like an idiot from front of my neighbors, I try to bend it back a little bit. and it didn't really work. Next up, uh, I think I'm making the swing arm. Yeah, yeah, I'm making the swing arm. But to finish the swing arm, I actually have to mount a sprocket first. So I ordered this nice thick uh, 428 sprocket and I think I'm gonna try to make an adapter that I can just weld onto this and then I can bolt the sprocket onto that adapter. Let me see if I can cut something out real quick and then I hope I can weld to this. To make the adapter I just measure the sprocket and then I'm gonna throw that onto the CNC machine. It was a little bit shallow, so I had to uh, widen it a little bit. As I welded it, the, the bracket kind of warped a little bit, so that's why I'm beating stuff with a hammer. I'm going to salvage a little bit of the old swing arm and cut these arms off, and then basically just weld them to the new frame. And here is the swing arm all welded up. You'd think my welds would be getting better over time, but holy hell. Here I am testing the suspension. Um, it is very stiff. On the plus side, the scooter is very light. Hopefully with the engine on there, the suspension works better. Next, I can go ahead and put on the chain. Then I make a little key fob holder. Some other miscellaneous brackets for the CDI and coil. Then I also steal the foot pegs and the exhaust off of an old dirt bike. So I think for the exhaust, I'm gonna cut right here, spin it, go through the frame, and we'll have it uh, end like right here. And most of that Mickey Mousing is because I had the audacity to weld the key switch on that side, so. 
Routing the exhaust was pretty simple. Um, I just used a combination of an old exhaust and then some new tubing that I bent up. Once the exhaust was figured out, it's time to utilize this old exercise bike for a seat. I struggled way too hard to get this thing apart. The idea was to keep the entire seat assembly from the exercise bike and just weld it on to the scooter. It was a little bit too tall as is, so I had to give it a haircut. It actually turned out really nice, and it is comfortable too. Also, while you weren't looking, I made a bracket for a gas tank I got off Amazon, and that will just be welded onto the seat post, like that. Because I'm an absolute idiot and didn't think things through, the carburetor won't fit underneath the frame because of the exhaust. Luckily, I found this adapter on Amazon, and we're gonna try that out. You can move the carb in any direction. Once I had the carb mounted, I went and tried to start the bike, and it didn't go too well. I got some bad news, and I got some even worse news. Uh, this is oil, and this oil was leaking from the exhaust port on the engine, so. And also, um, it didn't want to run without the choke being turned off. And I think that has to do with my little adapter plate thing that I put on there um, to allow me to jet the carburetor this way. I guess looking at it, the engine is too canted downward. So I'm just gonna... Okay, yeah, 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 we get it. So basically, I'm just gonna move the engine up a little bit. Then I also ended up making my own uh, carburetor adapter. And I think this will work a lot better. Shit. To be honest, I don't remember what I was working on last before this shot. Uh, but some things that I've done is I've been having some issues with the gear ratio and uh, this 25 tooth sprocket is the smallest one I could find and it only goes about 30 miles an hour so it's not it's not that fast I set up a disc brake in the back the kill switch is kind of just dangling here there's a bunch of wires just dangling but I don't know, a bunch of other stuff my favorite thing about it is how light it is oh Oh, f oh, my back. Yep. Yep. I will say it runs a little bit rough, and I think that's because of our little um, adapter plate situation we have with the um, with the intake manifold. Maybe just a, a fatter gasket on there or something. Okay, so it's not that fast but it does get you around. It has a lot of torque, and maybe it goes about 30 miles an hour. Let's see if we can do a burnout. Okay, it can kind of do a burnout. Um, just the chain fell off. A little bit loose and it definitely needs a chain tensioner. All right, well, can it wheelie? Okay, so it can wheelie, but can it go off road? Um, not really. The chain just falls off immediately. But that's all right, this is the maiden voyage, so we expect things to break and not to work properly. All in all though, I think this is a pretty good test drive. Well folks, I'll see you later.